Probably one of the most fundamental and important questions that we can ask in chemistry is, will a reaction happen? Of course, if we've identified an acid and a base, we can predict an acid-base reaction will occur when those substances are mixed. But there are a lot more chemical reactions than just acid-base reactions, and so it would be nice to be able to treat these problems more generally. Now, supposing that we have figured out a reaction will happen, we might also want to know how much energy we can get out of it if we're trying to power a generator or something, and if not, we might wonder how much energy would be required to cause this reaction to occur, because maybe it has valuable products that we want to produce. So, what we need is the theory of thermodynamics. This is the study of the relationship between heat and work energy and physical or chemical processes. This was principally developed um, in the mid-19th century by scientists trying to improve the efficiency of steam engines. Um, especially a lot of credit goes to Sadi Carnot, who formulated the second law of thermodynamics and figured that by improving the efficiency of steam engines, he could help France to win the Napoleonic Wars. Now, there are four underlying laws of thermodynamics. The first of them is the zeroth law. It's called the zeroth law because originally scientists didn't realize that this law was needed, uh, but later on they, they realized that it was not as trivial as they, they first anticipated, so they had to, to go and, and put it back in after the other laws had been discovered. So what the zeroth law says is that if we have two systems and they're in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then they're also in equilibrium with each other. So to give you a picture of that, here we might have systems A, B, and C. So if A and B are freely able to exchange heat, and so they're in equilibrium, and B and C are freely able to exchange heat until they come to equilibrium, then A is going to come into equilibrium with C, which means that A and C are going to have the same temperature. It might seem obvious, but it's an important part of thermodynamics. Next, we have a very important fundamental law of physics. The, the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can never be created or destroyed. Now, there's a caveat here. We can change the forms of energy. So we can convert gravitational energy into electrical energy. Uh, we can also transfer energy. We can take energy from one system and give it to another system. And so in that sense, the energy quantity in one system could go down. It could go up in another one. But if we tally up all the energy that's possible to account for, that total will never change. The way we can state this mathematically is if we have a sealed system called an isolated system, the change in energy of that system will always be zero. It can't go up, it can't go down. If we have a system which is in contact with another system, its energy can change, but the only way it can change is by adding or removing heat from the system, transferring it to or from the surroundings, or adding or removing work energy, transferring it to the surroundings. The other super fundamental law of thermodynamics and of the universe itself is that the total entropy, which we can kind of colloquially think of as the disorder of a system, and we'll represent that with a capital S, uh, that can only increase or remain constant for an isolated system. So the change in entropy of, of any isolated system will either uh, be zero or some positive quantity. One of the important consequences of this is that anything which happens spontaneously, um, that always corresponds to an increase in entropy. So for example, the dissolving of sugar when you put it in water it just happens spontaneously, and that corresponds to a huge increase in entropy of the system. Well, anything like that will not happen spontaneously in reverse. The sugar crystals will not reform after you've dissolved the sugar. And that's important in another way. It gives a, a directionality to how we experience time. There's a, a preferential way that things develop. That's because we're, we occupy a very low entropy universe. If we occupied a high entropy universe, um, then time could go the other direction. 
And finally, we have the third law. And this states that the entropy of a perfect crystalline solid, so where we have organized all the atoms or, or molecules uh, into a perfect lattice, if it's at absolute zero, that's zero Kelvin, then this entropy is going to be zero. Now the implications of this are, are a little bit subtle, uh, but basically since we can only ever sort of move halfway between the entropy of one system and another system when we bring them into contact, um, this says we can never cool a system down to absolute zero because that would take an infinite number of steps in order to accomplish that.